ignore the big bumps up and the big bumps down. Just ignore them. Ignore them. You know, personally, I uh, the only reason I watch the bumps at all is because I do these kind of interviews and I'm, <laughs> and I'm in, the, in the business. But uh, I'm being perfectly frank with you. I don't yeah. watch my portfolio on a daily basis, and I don't need to. You mean we're not rational beings? No, we're not <laughs> rational. In fact, there, there's four things. We're, we're irrational, we're illogical, we are emotional, and we can be very overconfident in our own judgments. Mm -hmm. And the same problems, ironically, that get us into uh, problems in our personal relationships uh, get us into problems with investing. In the long term, the market is driven primarily by the earnings of companies. In the short term, the bigger influence can be the P-E ratios, which are, in fact, often uh, influenced by emotions. Your human nature is such that you're inclined to want to chase after the winners, um, but the research I've done that shows in the book are many of the winners become losers, and many of the losing funds actually become winners. So it can be a bit of a mugs game trying to predict which funds are going to outperform. Uh, why is that? Well, it comes right down to the base theory of investments and how efficient is the market. Is it possible for a fund manager to be able to do better and be able to know which stocks are going to do better than the index. Um, is it possible? Yes, it is. Even though it's possible for a small minority to beat the index, uh, it's hard to know in advance who those are going to be. And the smart investors have to remember that these are just deviations and it's better to get focused on the long-term trend because if you don't, you're going to undermine your returns in the long term. There's no doubt about that. Many uh, mutual funds hold uh, all sorts of things that investors aren't aware of. For instance, mm -hmm. Canadian equity funds often hold U.S. equities. And if you're trying to define the right allocation of U.S. equities and Canadian equities and bonds and so on in your portfolio, if one of your mutual funds holds other bits of yeah. the other asset allocations, you can't get the right asset allocation mm -hmm. overall. Again, if you're the kind of investor who wants to play a little bit and you have money put aside to gamble with, then fine. Be prepared to lose it and do whatever you want with it. But that's not an investment strategy. That's more of a gambling fun strategy. It's a hobby. I generally go by a very simple rule, and that is that if your time horizon, if your investment time horizon is less than five years, you should not be invested in the stock market, full stop. And then if your time horizon is greater than five years, you should not be worried about what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. The risk is that people's psychology overcomes them, and they're tempted to uh, pull the trigger button and get out. And uh, the problem with that is, you can only do that if you're smart enough to know when to get back in again. Because when you look at the size of our market compared to the U.S., we're basically a small cap country. Right. Uh, but, so we're talking about micro caps, really, when we're talking about small caps in Canada. Uh, and they depend on uh, how the economy does in general. If we see interest rates spike up higher than expected, uh, the small caps are in trouble. And really, it's not the emotional part that defines risk. It's your practical risk elements, like your time horizon, uh, your, 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 the steadiness of your income, the reliability of your income, how many dependents you have. And those those kind of practical issues that have nothing to do with your emotions. As the Canadian dollar goes down, although things cost more when you travel, your investments increase in value. So they're offsetting, and that's the benefit of currency diversification. Okay, well, tell me the psychological aspect here. Yeah, it's interesting. It's one of the very few things that experts agree with uh, retail investors on, is that it's very difficult to add value if you're trying to market time. Market timing means trying to get in and out of the market in the short term to uh, boost your returns better mm -hmm. than they would be if you were just in the market. And the bottom line is that the market moves very unpredictably in the short term. It's driven by a lot of random events that are very chaotic and hard to synthesize into really realistic, intelligible mm -hmm. predictions, and that makes it virtually impossible. So uh, you're going to lose if you try to time the market, and you're better just to sit and hold and uh, stay faithful to whatever time horizon you have set for yourself. One of the things we want to do here in Canada is be better known on foreign markets uh, so that we can attract more foreign investment, because that provides some liquidity in our own markets, which is uh, beneficial for retail investors and institutional investors. The bank uh, is doing what it needs to do because the world economy needs lower interest rates. The world economy needs liquidity. As long as you're bullish on investing, you should be bullish on indexing. So the question isn't so much to index or not, the question is to be investor or not, given these volatile markets. And the answer to that is obviously if you have a long-term time horizon, you should be invested. Uh, indexing still makes sense as a good long-term investment.